again, if you're not by our radio, you can watch our game online tonight, either on Facebook Live at WIBW News or on YouTube. Just go to YouTube.com slash WIBW News now. Now let's welcome in the third member of our broadcast team, Jake Laban, who's down on the sideline. And Jake, it is an absolutely gorgeous night for football on the second to last night of October. It's a complete reversal of what happened a week ago today when it was about 20 degrees. It is perfect. 62 degrees right now here at Hummer Sports Park. It might dip down to just 53 degrees by the end of the game tonight. So perfect football weather when it comes to temperature. Wind-wise right now, not much wind at all. If you look up at the flags up on the goalpost, they're hardly moving. It's about a five-mile-per-hour breeze coming from the east. Yes, an east wind today. And it's really not much of a factor down here. And you couldn't ask for that against two teams that didn't quite have the year that they were hoping for. This should be an even game, so the weather not going to be a big factor in this one. I think it's going to be turnovers. The team who has the plus turnover margin, I think, will end up with the victory today and moving on in the playoffs. But, guys, I mean, you don't even need gloves out here. It is an absolutely gorgeous night for football. Appreciate that. Jake will be down with Jake throughout the game tonight. And Greg, as our two teams are taking the field this evening, Dodge City and Topeka High both heading over to their sidelines. Let's get a couple keys to the game. Let's start with the Topeka High offense led by the freshman quarterback, B.J. Kennedy. Well, for him, I think it's just, you know, you hit the playoff time, Brendan, and it is it is a bigger stage, so to speak. I think for him, as long as he's not nervous, doesn't feel like he's nervous, gets out there, runs the offense, they get that early score, get, start to get into the rhythm. I think that's important. On the defensive side of the ball, we mentioned it earlier on in our pregame show, the defense is the strength for both of these teams. Dodge City has been a little shaky on offense. The same can be said for Topeka High. What is the high defense going to need to do to set the tone in this game? Well, this team, Dodge City-wise, has had a lot of turnovers. I think you create the turnovers. Jake's right. I think that turnover margin, especially in the playoffs, is always important because of the fact you have to take care of the football in the playoffs. Because the good teams, they score off turnovers. And you can't have that in the playoff time as well. It's been proven time and time again. I think that's the big part. Get out there, hit somebody, create turnovers, get that football back, and be able to go out there and get scores. And speaking of turnovers, that's something that Topeka High is going to have to avoid on offense. B.J. Kennedy, the quarterback, he has two touchdown passes on the year, two touchdown runs as well, so four total, but four interceptions thrown as well, including one last week. He only threw six passes in the game last week. You're going to need a little more efficiency out of the freshman tonight. Yeah, you are. Uh, you, you know, you'd like a better mix of that, but it's also one for Carlos Kelly. It's like, well, what are we able to do as far as throwing that at him as well? And, you know, the other thing you can look at, and, and it's always interesting to see now, especially during COVID, how many players are on the bench for each team? You know, this is about the smallest numbers you will see even for 6A on both sides on what they're able to do because, you know, Dodge City has had some COVID, I mean, COVID issues as well. Um, and, and I think it's, you know, it's just interesting to see what, uh, you know, what we've got here as far as the number of personnel. You know, injuries, it's not going to take, you know, you know, you don't want injuries, but boy, you get an injury in a key spot. Uh, you don't have much depth out there on both teams. We thank you for joining us tonight on WIBW AM Topeka, FM News 104.9. And if you're watching on Facebook Live or YouTube, we appreciate your viewership and listenership as well. Dodge City won the toss and deferred, so the Red Demons will be kicking away. Topeka High will return from the south end zone. It's Tylen Alejos and Jalen Smith deep to return for the Trojans. Isaac Estevante, the kicker for the Red Demons, kicks it away deep to the south end zone. It bounces off the turf, and we are underway here in Topeka. It's fielded after a muff by Alejo. It's back at the Topeka High five-yard line, and he doesn't have much room to run right back up the middle of the field. He's dropped at the 14, and that is where Topeka High will start its first possession of the game, led by freshman quarterback B.J. Kennedy, six foot five, 230 pounds, completing about 40% of his passes this season two passing touchdowns, and two rushing touchdowns compared to four interceptions for the year. Just a few seconds tick off the clock on the opening kickoff as the Trojans break their huddle on first down and 10. Ball centered between the hashes on their own 14-yard line. They come out with one wide receiver isolated on either side of the formation. A wing left and two running backs in the backfield for Kennedy. 
who bends down to the gun and takes the first down snap. He hands it off, and it's a sweep to the left, a carry up across the 15-yard line to the 17. Carry that time by Diego Carr, the transfer from Hayden, who last week had a huge week, 69 yards on the ground with three touchdowns and a win over Topeka West. And actually, Kennedy, he is on the bench. I think that's Alejos who's at quarterback. You, you see Kennedy, he's actually not on the bench. He's kind of standing on the sideline. That is a great point, Greg, and I missed that right off the jump, but you are correct. They're going with a run-heavy offense here, not even keeping the freshman quarterback out there on the field. It is Tylen Alejos, the leading rusher for the Trojans this year, takes the direct snap again. Another hand up up the middle to Diego Carr, who plunges through the pile, gets up to the 22-yard line. That's a gain of six, and after two straight runs, that will set up a third down and one for the Trojans, who are led up front by a very veteran group of linemen, four seniors and a junior on the starting offensive line for the Trojans. Clifton Stewart, True James, Jeff Moore, and Miles Wright, the seniors. Dexter Sukon, the only junior in that group. 10.45 to go here in the first. Still no score on the first possession of the game. Topeka High at its own 22-yard line, facing a third down and short. Snap to Alejos, fakes a handoff. He'll bounce to the right, toss it out on a sweet play. At the 20-yard line, tackle made right near the original line of scrimmage. And I'm not sure Topeka High had enough yardage on that pitch out to pick up the first down. That was pitched outside to Elijah Williams on the carry, who gets dropped after no gain whatsoever. Fourth down and a long one now for the Trojans early on in this first quarter. Yeah, Dodge City did a great job of being able to stretch out that play. Alejos got hit as he pitched the ball, but... Williams got strung out towards the sideline and couldn't turn to try and get that first down. Alejos now back to punt on this opening possession, just over two minutes gone on the first quarter clock and someone running on late. There are just five seconds sure on the play clock, out. down to three, down to two, down to one, and they just get it off. Alejos takes a high snap and has his punt partially blocked, and it is going to bounce at the 35 and will take a Topeka high bounce, and it's going to just keep rolling, rolling, rolling all the way to midfield. So a punt that was either just a complete shank or was actually tipped slightly on the block attempt by Dodge City takes a good roll for the Trojans. In the end, a 28-yard kick, and Dodge City will take over at midfield. No score, 9.33 to go in the first. You know, Brennan, I'm not sure that was blocked because Dodge City had a block on because they had five or six guys there. I think uh, Aleos just rushed it and uh, may have just mishit it as far as uh, getting that punt off. Dodge City comes out with a first down and 10 from the midfield stripe. Wide side of the field is the left side with three wide receivers and a bunch there. Snap to the quarterback, Alden Nedler, and Nedler goes right up the middle on a quarterback keeper, somersaults over defender on the hit at the 39-yard line. A pickup of 11 yards on the first down keeper by the quarterback, Nedler, and Dodge City is in business already at the 39-yard line of Topeka High. Boy, he had a huge hole right up the middle. Uh, Tyrez, the center, Tehran, the left guard opened up a big hole for Nedler to go right through to get the first down. First and 10 now for the Red Demons. Once again, a bunch of three wide receivers to the left side. Nedler again, quarterback keeper, starts up the middle, now bounces to the right side, gets up to the 36-yard line where he's tripped up. It's Tylen Alejos in on the stop. Not only does he play running back, play a little Wildcat quarterback, but last season he was an all-city and all-league honorable mention for the Topeka High defense. He makes the stop after a gain of three on first and 10. Yeah, good ankle tackle by Alejos. Got Nedler down as they have the digital uh, play that came in. Everyone looked at their play sheet. 8.45 to go in the opening period. Nedler this time will throw a little swing pass to the outside. It's caught by Ty Villasing. Villasing bounces toward the sideline and is able to race all the way up past the 30, give him the 28-yard line. Really hit the Jets once he got past the first defender. It's a pickup of eight, and that's enough for another Red Demon first down. Yeah, that was a nice play. Simple swing pass. All really Villa saying as he got to the outside, got by one defender, was able to get the first down as the Red Demons moving the football down the field. Three plays, already two first downs gained by Dodge City on their opening possession of this scoreless game. Now three wide receivers to the wide side right on first and 10. Nedler will keep it, bounce up the middle on the RPO lunges through a couple of defenders and gets up to the 25-yard line. That's a gain of three, maybe three and a half for Dodge City, which continues to move the ball well on the ground. Yeah, keeping at a good tempo as well as Hyde trying to get in there to read the defense. 
as they look down at their play sheet on their wrist. Now they're set to go with that four-man defensive front. Same formation for Dodge City with three wide receivers to the wide side right. Nedler in the gun. This time he is going to give it off to his running back, who is swallowed up right at the point of attack. Maybe a half a yard on the carry. That is a great job in the middle by the defensive line for Topeka High. It's Villasing on the carry. Give him about a half a yard at most to set up a third down and six for the Dodge City offense. That defensive line for Topeka High, Trey Thomas, Jude Gallegos, Jamari Pleasant, and Jacob Jackson, one of the better units for a pretty strong Topeka High defense. Brendan, first big play of the night, third and six at the 24th. They don't make it. This is definite four-down territory. Line to gain is the aim. Dodge City has only attempted one field goal on the year. Snapped another quick look out to the wide side right. Matt Freeze, the top receiver for Dodge City, drops the pass, but he picks it up and keeps running. There is no whistle, and Greg, that throw may have actually been a lateral parallel to the line of scrimmage. That would mean the play can continue, and it sure does. Yeah, they didn't call it, so they considered it a lateral. So yeah. officially, despite the overhand throwing motion, it is a run play technically. No one for Topeka High came up and claimed the ball, so Freeze picks it right back up and is able to gain two yards. So he's up to the 22-yard line. Fourth down and four to go. Under six and a half minutes to play in the first quarter. Still no score. Trips receivers to the far side left. One wide receiver to the right. Hard count from the quarterback, Nedler, but he's not able to get a jump from Topeka High. Now the running back, Villa Singh, switches from the right to the left, flanking Nedler. Nedler takes it. Looks left. Pumps once. Now he looks back over the middle. Throws high for Freeze, who snags it over the middle. Gives to the 10 to the 5. Touchdown, Dodge City. Matt Freeze left all alone, crossing the middle on the slant route from the left slot. He gets in and is able to race up field for a touchdown, and Dodge City draws first blood. 6.07 to go in the first quarter. 6 nothing. Red Demons lead. Yeah, got in front of the defenders in that zone defense, and he went across the field. Topeka High defender reacted late. Once he got by that one, it was smooth sailing for Freeze for the 22-yard touchdown reception. On for the extra point attempt, Isaac Estevante, 14 of 15 on the year, approaches with the kick, kind of a spinning kick just inside the left upright, and it is good. 6.07 to go in the opening period. It is 7-0 Dodge City over Topeka High. We'll be back after this on the Invista Credit Union 5D Preps Game of the Week on 580 WIBW. You know that feeling? Like every door is closing and you just can't see a way out? Org. A message from the Ad Council. Tylen Alejos with the return of the ensuing kickoff and for the first score of the game by Dodge City. And we've got a flag down on the return. Dodge City scored, took seven plays, three minutes, 26 seconds to make it a 7-0 to zero game. Topeka High and Alejos get the ball up to the 20-yard line, but it might be coming back with some laundry on the field, our first penalty of the game. 5.58 to go in the first quarter after the return, and Topeka High is already moving back closer to its own goal line. During the return, personal foul, left side block, the last half the distance, first down. And Greg, that is a tough penalty for Topeka High to take. That's a penalty we've seen called more and more in the last two years or so, and that's tough in this moment already early in the game. Yeah, and especially there where uh, you go half the distance, so now you start first and 10 inside your own 10-yard line. Looks like it just inside the nine. First down for the Trojans after the long penalty. 5.58 to go in the opening period. First down, Alejos takes the snap, hands it off, sweeping right. Elijah Williams gets to that, gets back to, pardon me, the 10-yard line. 
crosses it, gets to the 11. It's a gain of two, so second down and eight coming up for the Trojans. Hey, Jake, quickly on the sideline, we've seen B.J. Kennedy standing there. It doesn't look like he's got anything wrong with him. No, I mean, his helmet's on, hands on his hips, just waiting to get in the game, but it's clearly Alejos. And, I mean, maybe it is the you know passing game, but right now it is simply zone read. That's it for Topeka Hawk. Second down and eight for the Trojans. Alejos once again in the T formation gun. A little bit of a bobble on the sweep hand up to Williams. This time bouncing out to the left. Turns back up field on the near hash. But he gains maybe a yard if that. Dropped by the defensive end Chance Kerr on the stop. It's a gain of just one. And it's third down and seven coming up for the Topeka High offense. Get you the other skill position players for the Trojans. You mentioned Elijah Williams in running the ball a couple of times so far. Other wide receivers in the starting lineup, Naz Phillips and Jalen Fulton, along with the starting running backs, Tylen Alejos and Diego Carr. Alejos, of course, in there in the quarterback role at the moment, and he is going to continue that coming in from the sideline with this third down play, Greg. Yeah, and he got it late, though. So already just eight seconds on the play clock right now. Trojans have to sprint up to the line, spreading it out. One wide receiver on either side of the formation. Play clock at two. Alejos takes the snap. It's a keeper, and he angles off to the left. Bounces off of one tackle. Tries dragging defenders with him, and eventually spins out of the 20-yard line. Heads down the near left sideline and picks up the first first down of the game for the Trojans. Tylen Alejos, not a big body, just 5'9", 180, but he's got a low center of gravity and great body control. Spins out of a tackle and picks up a first down up to the 26. Boy, that had disaster written all over it, but... Dodd City was going to get him behind the line of scrimmage, but he managed to avoid one tackle, spin away from another tackle, and boy, that's a big first down early on here. 424 left to go first quarter. 7 nothing. Dodge City with the lead over Topeka High here in the opening night of high school football playoff action. Alejos in the gun, one running back on either side of him. Another keeper by Alejos, makes the hand up to Williams and goes right up the gut, plows into a defender, and is dragged down at the 35-yard line. Alden Nedler, the linebacker, is finally able to bring Alejos down after a pickup of nine up to the 35. Yeah, good job as far as the fake was concerned. Kept it in the belly of his running back for a long time. Pulled it back in. Was able to get some of those defenders going with the running back and that opened up the middle for him to get the nine-yard game. Good job up front by the center Jeff Moore to clear the hole. One of the leaders for this Topeka High team, not just on offense. Now second down and one under four minutes on the clock in the first. Alejos gets the signal. Sweeps it to the right. Elijah Williams breaks one tackle to cut back up field. Cuts up again and is able to just get one yard past the sticks. That's enough for the second first down of this drive for Topeka High on the far right hash. First down Trojans. Yeah, I don't think Carlos Kelly is going to mind. If they can still get first downs, and especially on the first down play, getting good chunk yardage like they've been able to do and at least get movement here and keep that clock running. Ball now on the far right hash, nose of it laying on the 37-yard line. As the Trojans now come out with two wide receivers on the left side of the formation, including Elijah Williams in the left side slot, one receiver isolated to the right. Alejos still in the gun with Diego Carr. Carr now moving both him and his quarterback up three on the play clock. Alejos takes it, drops. He's going to throw it to the outside, looking for Williams. That's the first pass attempt of the game for Alejos. But he put a little too much zip on it, threw it right over his receiver's head, incomplete. Second and 10 coming up with 3.08 on the clock. Yeah, you, you need to do some of that as far as keeping this defense on us so they don't put 7, 8 in the box all the time. But that's where 1, 2, that Alejos, of course, not very much, not very many reps at quarterback uh, with the little issue there, just throwing over the head of his receiver. Alejos, the leading rusher for Topeka High this year, 81 carries entering tonight for 539 yards. In the quarterback role this evening. Second down and 10 after the incompletion for Topeka High. Running back and wing to the left. Alejos this time a give up the middle to Diego Carr. And Carr is bottled up instantly. He gets two yards and is put to a halt right there at the 39-yard line. Third down and eight now for the Trojans. Another key play late in the first quarter. Trailing Dodge City 7-0. Now let's see what they're able to do. They keep it on the ground or... Let Alejos throw the football. What Dodge City had a key third down on a previous possession. Now it looks like they're going to do the same. Now we've got a whistle and official timeout. Have to remove Alden Nedler yeah. from the game. Some blood 
on the uniforms. They'll get him cleaned up. That's a key player for this Dodge City defense who's off the field on this third and eight play, 240 on the clock. Alejos, designed roll to the left. He turns up field. He keeps it. He is hit right away at the 42-yard line. A great stop that time by Dodge City. Tackle made by Christian Arrivas. Knocked down. They'll give him about the 42 and a half ball right between the two yard markers. And it will be a punting predicament for the Topeka High Trojans, four yards shy of the sticks on fourth down. Yeah, let's see if Dodge City, previous punt, they had a rush on. Let's see if Dodge City does the same here. Red got, Demons leading in this game so far, 7 nothing down to two minutes here in the first quarter. They've got eight on the line of scrimmage. Alejos back to punt. Heels on his own 30-yard line. High snap has to get it away quickly. They get pressure, and again, that may have been tipped, or oh, it no. was a just shanked by Alejos, but he was pummeled on the kick. That's a flag right at the mark, and Jake Laban, there was definitely contact with the puncher Alejos. Yeah, Alejos definitely got ran into, and they are going to call roughing the kicker. Here's the thing. Did it get tipped, or did it get blocked? Because if it did... That negates the roughing the kicker penalty. And right now, there is no argument from the Dodge City coaching staff. That ball looked like it actually got tipped by one of the upmen for Topeka High. But uh, they're going to say roughing the kicker. I mean, he got hammered, but I'm surprised there was at least no discussion amongst the officials about that ball being partially tipped. And now, after you get the 15-yard penalty, Greg, B.J. Kennedy, the freshman quarterback, on the field for the first time tonight with the ball in plus territory at the 43-yard line of Dodge City. Well, let's see what they do here with Kennedy, their normal starting quarterback now in the game. He bends down in the gun, takes the snap in the shotgun, design roll to the left, flips it out to Tylen Alejos, who wasn't even looking for the ball. They were trying to set up a simple little swing pass on the left sideline. Kennedy was aiming for the junior running back, and they just couldn't hook up. Second down and 10 for the Trojans. I'll tell you what, that was very, very close to being backwards, which then could have caused more issue. I mean, it was just barely past vertical. And Kennedy comes right back off the field, so he gets one snap and heads out, so Alejos will return to quarterback duties behind center. Well, it makes me wonder, though, if he might have been a little bit shaken up and uh, maybe just wanted to get him a blow for the play. 100 seconds left in the first quarter. Dodge City leading Topeka High 7-0, but the Trojans are in plus territory. Now Alejos with a design roll left. He's going to throw. Toss it back over the middle. It's intercepted by Dodge City. Picked off at the 35-yard line. Interception made by the free safety, Matt Freeze. He's got a touchdown. Now he's got an interception. And with 1.33 to go in the opening period, Topeka High turns it over on the 10th play of the drive. You know, it's one of those, Brendan, that rolling out to the left like that, You've got one receiver over there, so you know where that quarterback has got his eyes locked in. And that was a great job of getting that interception by Dodge City, jumping the route, being able to get the interception. First turnover of the night. Ten plays, four minutes and 25 seconds off the clock, and Dodge City thwarts the opening or the second drive of the first quarter for Topeka High. Now it's first down and 10 for the Red Demons. It's a handoff to the inside, and nothing doing on the carry by Chance Kerr. He gets stuffed at the 36. That is officially where the ball was marked after a minimal return off the interception. So clarify that for you. Ball is at the 36. No gain on the first down carry. Now this Topeka high defense. Going to have to muscle up here. Don't want to get down 14 nothing. Coming off of the turnover. Under a minute to go in the first quarter. Ball just inside the near right hash. Two receivers and a stack to the right. Nedler, the quarterback, will keep it off a of fake. Goes up the middle, passes the 40, runs all the way through defender up to the 46-yard line. That's a pickup of exactly 10 right at the sticks. First down for Dodge City. Yeah, nice run. Once again, nice fake. Drawn the defenders off to the running back. Nedler keeps it. Big hole once again right up the middle. Second time, he's had a wide open hole inside that A-gap and uh, able to get the first down. Jalen Fulton made the stop that time. Now 32 seconds left in the opening period. Two-by-two two receiver set with a running back for Dodge City. Nedler in the gun. Fakes a handoff. Once again, he's going to keep angles off tackle to the right. Passes midfield. Gets to the 49-yard line. That's a pickup of five. Setting up a second down and five for Dodge City as the clock winds down here in the first. 
Tackle made up front that time by Jacob Jackson as the final seven seconds are going to tick away without a play as Dodge City will sit on this ball and go into the second quarter with a 7-0 lead over Topeka High. We will take a quarter break with the two teams. We'll be right back after this. You're listening to the Invista Credit Union 580 Preps Game of the Week on 580 WIBW. Ah, Steven. Who said that? Welcome back to the Investor Credit Union 580 Preps Game Just of the Week. Started, the wings, etc. Welcome back to the Investor Credit Union 580 Preps Game of the Week here on 580 WIBW. The Topeka High Trojans, Carlos Kelly, Topeka the Topeka High, High Trojans trailing by a margin of 7-0 to zero as we start this second quarter. Dodge City with that 7-0 lead has the ball right at midfield facing a second down and five, yard line, five yards to go. Snap to Alden Nedler, the starting quarterback for Dodge City. Hand off angle to the right. And a short gain on the carry by Chance Kerr. Gets it into plus territory at the 48-yard line. A gain of two, setting down a third down and about two, two and a half yards to go for the Red Demons. Dodge City, 65 yards total offense at the end of the first quarter on 10 plays. Topeka High, 37 yards of total offense on 13 plays. Two-by-two two receivers set on either side of the formation for Dodge City. Third down and two, 30 seconds off the clock here in the second quarter. Ball in the far right hash. Nedler crouches down in the gun. Quarterback draw, takes power right up the middle, gets to the sticks and a little bit more. He reaches the 45-yard line. That's a gain of three on third down and two. First down, Red Demons. And Dodge City, Greg, continues to move the ball on the ground right up the gun. Yeah, and they're going right up the, with their big three. Teron left guard, Chires the center, and Gonzalez the right guard. That's been uh, playing well so far, 240, 255, and 245 across those inner three. Same formation for Dodge City on first down and 10 at the 45-yard line. Nedler waits for the snap, takes it. Nedler now drops, looking to pass. He's going to throw deep over the middle. He's got a man wide open, and it's dropped by Dodge City. That was going to be a walk-in touchdown. However, a deep drop by Josh Taylor, the six-foot senior receiver. It hit him right in the numbers, but he couldn't hold on. Second down and 10 now for the Red Demons. Greg, that would have been an easy score for Dodge City had he held on. Boy, Tylen Aleos got caught in no man's land, no safety help, and it was right over the middle. That would have been the easiest six he would have had, except you got to catch the football. Boy, keep that one in your back pocket if they don't score here on that opportunity. Second down and long for the Red Demons. Now they come out wide side left with a bunch of three receivers, one receiver right. Nedler takes it, another designed pass play. He drops five steps. Now looking down the left sideline, throwing it near the numbers. It's a jump ball, and it's caught by Freeze for Dodge City. He leaps up over the defensive back for Topeka High, and Will Hevener can't do anything about it. First down, Dodge City all the way down to the 20-yard line, a pickup of 25 yards. Yeah, great throw. What was interesting, I thought the uh, defender had a chance. He went at it from the side versus trying to go up front, but it may have just been high enough for him not able to get it. Great catch by Freeze. 10.35 on the clock here in the second quarter. Dodge City already leading 7 nothing and on the drive again. Nedler takes the snap, three-step drop, now a quarterback draw. Starts up the middle, bounces to the left side near the sideline, puts his shoulder down into a defender, and is able to race ahead for a few extra yards. Put his shoulder into Dadrian Montgomery, the second leading tackler for Topeka High this year is able to pick up good yardage. He gets down to the 11 yard line. That's a pickup of nine yards. Second down and one now for Dodge City with the ninth play of the drive coming up. Yeah, Nedler doing a lot of it, not only through the air, but mainly on the ground. 
Nedler in the gun, two receivers to the short side left, takes the snap, is going to hand it off, going right up the middle, and reaching the end zone is Chance Kerr. Touchdown, Dodge City. They extend their lead to 13-0 with 9.45 to go in the first half. They continue to tear up the Topeka High defense right up the middle. Yeah, right up the middle. Once again, a big opening there as Kerr takes it 11 yards for the touchdown. And boy, it's those guard center guard right through that A gap, both sides, that they have been getting a lot of success, not only with Nedler, now with Kerr. Estevante on for the extra point to make it a 14 point game. Snap comes. It's a good snap, good hold. The kick is up, and the kick is good. With that, it is now 14 to 0. Dodge City over Topeka High. We'll be back after this. You're listening to the Invista Credit Union 580 Preps Game of the Week on 580 WIBW. Right now, I'll say. Smart bet now seventeen ninety nine. Nine forty five to go in the second quarter on the Invista Credit Union five D Preps game of the week. A nine play, three minute forty eight second drive by Dodge City, capped off by an eleven yard touchdown run by Chance Kerr, has made this game fourteen to zero. Red Demons over the Topeka High Trojans. Topeka High will start this next possession at its own twenty yard line after a kick out of the end zone. And Greg, this is already a moment here early in the second quarter where Topeka High needs to put together a scoring drive. Yeah, they absolutely do. Uh, trying to get that consistency. Had it a little bit on that last drive, but then through the interception. Right now, 0-3 passing-wise with that interception for Topeka High. So they're going to have to make some hay on the ground here on this drive. First down and 10 for the Trojans. And, and we've we have 12. got a substitution penalty. Late getting off the field for Topeka High was Jude Gallegos. He tries rushing to the sideline, but they broke the huddle with the extra man. And instead of first and 10 at the 20, it's first and 15 at the 15. A couple tough mistakes with penalties now so far in this first half, Greg. Yeah, now you're starting drives. All three of your drives have started from inside the 20. First down and 10 for the Trojans. It is another new quarterback into the game. It's Colin Daniels. He hands it off to Alejos, who angles a run off to the left, gets maybe a yard up to the 16-yard line. Second down and 14 coming up. Colin Daniels, 5'11", 165-pound senior, is now the third quarterback who has taken a snap in this game for Topeka High. Tylen Alejos, the starting running back, was the Wildcat quarterback for the entirety of the first quarter. B.J. Kennedy, the usual starter for Topeka High, took just one snap and then headed back to the bench. 14-0, Dodge City, Topeka High, facing a second down and 14 at its own 16. Daniels under center with a heavy eye formation to the right. Now Daniels drops back, looking deep over the middle. He's picked off right over the middle, and it's Matt Freeze again up at the 37-yard line. A two-play drive comes to an end. A 21-yard pass floated down the field is picked off by Matt Freeze, his second interception, and Dodge City, after being off the field for less than a minute offensively, is in business again. Simple thing there, pass under thrown, Brendan. They had his man open. As he had a step on Freeze, but simply underthrew it, and Freeze able to get second interception of the night. So Freeze having an outstanding day so far. A touchdown reception and two interceptions. Now the Dodge City offense moving from right to left as you listen. Three wide receivers bunched to the left side. Alden Nedler, the quarterback on first down, hands it off up the middle. Ty Villasin carries it through a gaping hole and is able to lunge ahead to the 23-yard line. 
It's a pickup of 14 on first down and 10. And again, the offensive line for Dodge City is creating humongous holes for the running game. Yeah, and just inside the tackles is where they've had a lot of their success. And here's Dodge right back to the line. They are racing quickly. Now the trips bunches to the right side for the wide receivers as Nedler is still in the gun. Short drop. He tosses it outside to Billsing. It's a backwards pass. It's still loose on the turf. And eventually Dodge City is able to dive on it way back at the 37-yard line. So after a gain of 14 on a run, a fumble goes for a loss of 14 yards with 8.22 to go in the second quarter. We also have an injury for a Topeka High player near the far numbers. Jake LeBon, were you able to see who went down on that play for the Trojans? I did not, but I can tell you this. The Dodge City Athletic Trainer got to that Topeka High Trojan as fast as possible, and they immediately waved to uh, Carlos Kelly, the head coach of Topeka High who then immediately looked at the uh, doctor. So I think this might be a serious injury. With that, we will take a break here on the Invista Credit Union 5D Preps Game of the Week. We'll get you the information on who went down and what the situation is. 8.22 to go in the second quarter. Dodge City with the ball up 14-0 to zero on Topeka High. You're listening to the Invista Credit Union 5D Preps Game of the Week on 580 WIBW. On the battlefield, there's a... Welcome back to Hummer Sports Park and the Invista Credit Union 580 Preps Game of the Week. Brendan Dorzinski, Greg Akagi, and Jake Laban with you. Dodge City with a 14-0 lead, but of more concern right now is an injured Topeka High player on the far side of the field after a fumble on a backwards pass by Dodge City. They went for a loss of 14 yards. A Trojan, who we are still working to identify, went down in a heap on the field and uh, according to our Jake Laban, was writhing in pain. His teammates for Topeka High, uh, who had been taking a knee on the field, they are now walking off to their own sideline. The gurney is out. And, you know, Greg, we talked so much in the pregame show about all the different health things that have happened this year that have made this season as wild as it has been. But uh, there's always the worry that something big and serious could happen injury-wise during the game. And uh, you just hate to see it for, for any kid, any athlete who goes down like that. Well, and, and like you said, uh, Brendan, the Dodge City trainer came running out, not walking out, came running out. So, uh, you know, you don't want to speculate, but obviously something serious enough that a trainer can see with the naked eye to say, hey, uh, we've got a serious situation. And they brought out, uh, you know, it makes me wonder if they're putting an air cast on one of those legs because of the fact that they're taking the time to do that. Because uh, normally you, in a situation like that, uh, they try to be as careful as they can. Uh, and I, I'm wondering if maybe the player's parents may be out there too. They are lifting the player up onto the gurney now. Jake, can you have you had a chance to see the number? I have not yet. They, um, it is, I because it's not a neck injury or a hip injury because they elevated the, the one of the sides. Um, kind of like a recliner uh, on the gurney. So it's not a neck or a hip injury. I believe it is an ankle or a knee injury. I still haven't been able to see what the number was. We will get that number to you as quickly as possible and identify who is down for Topeka High. A scary scene. You can hear a pin drop right now at Hummer Sports Park. And obviously our thoughts and all positive vibrations being sent to Topeka High. and our injured player. Well, and then, you know, that's why you have trainers on the sideline. And then specifically, not only for the minor injuries, a player comes down, maybe shaken up, but 
for the serious injuries like this. They they have been trained on what to do and how to do it as well. And it looks like they actually have him covered up as far as his uniform, so not able to see what that is. But obviously getting him off and uh, probably getting him to a medical si medical facility here in a, in a bit. As our Jake Laban is in the area, we'll see if Jake is able to pick up on a number from the jersey here. And once we have any sort of clarification, we will relay you any information we possibly can. Again, a quick game reset for you. 8.22 to go in the first half. Topeka High trailing Dodge City 14-0 on the first night of high school football playoff action here in Kansas. A battle of 6A West teams. Dodge City made the trip nearly five hours to the east to take on Topeka High. The injury we can confirm after a report from Jake, Jude Gallegos, the offensive and defensive lineman, the junior for Topeka High, is the player being carted off. And again, our best wishes uh, go to Jude, and hopefully it is not as serious as it may have seemed. And whatever the situation is, it is a quick and speedy recovery for the junior lineman. Yeah, even a Dodge City player came over to talk uh, with one of the Topeka High players as well so you can see obviously concern on both sides despite the injury we're getting back to football clock ticks down to about 8 15 on second down and 24 for dodge city alden nedler the quarterback will keep it on a designed quarterback draw running to the right he's able to fight through some traffic and gets up to the 29 yard line it's a gain of eight yards on second down and 24 so third and 16 with under eight minutes to go in the first half coming up for the Red Demons. Yeah, lest you forget, it was a near disaster for Dodge City on that backwards pass that was dropped that uh, they recovered on a 14-yard loss. Dodge City races back to the line, third down and long, three receivers to the wide side left. Nedler drops, he's looking left, throws now back over the middle, and he misses his target crossing the middle of the field. He was aiming for Stone Wilson, who had a huge game last week, but he's not able to haul that one in. It falls incomplete, and now it is fourth down and 16 to go for Dodge City, but the Demons are keeping their offense out on the field with the ball at the 28-yard line. And again, Dodge City has only attempted one field goal this year. There's no wind at play, but it would be a 45-yard kick from here. Instead, Nedler and the offense will stay out. Fourth down and long, 7.38 on the clock. Dodge City already up 14 nothing. Nedler takes it. Three-step drop, shifts slightly to the right, throws to the right sideline, completes the pass, but the tackle is made on the far right sideline. Excellent play on the outside. The stop made by Isaiah Kincaid for Topeka High. Makes the stop on the far sideline. It is a gain up to the 15-yard line, but that is about three yards shy of the line to gain for Dodge City. So the Topeka High defense is able to make a stand and gets the ball back with seven and a half to play until the break. Yeah, that's what you love to see as they got the pass to uh, Josh Taylor, but they came up short, so Topeka High holds. So they did not have an issue off of that second interception of the night by the Trojans. Fourth drive of the game for Topeka High coming up with seven and a half minutes to go. High snap to Alejos. He gives it off up the middle. A short carry for Topeka High. Again, of just a yard on first down. The offensive line for Topeka High, Greg, has just not gotten much of a push on those interior runs. Yeah, they, there's nothing there. Williams trying to find a hole. Nothing there for him to be able to do. And by the way, Ale excuse me, Alejos back at quarterback for Topeka High. Second down and nine for the Trojans after the gain of one. Topeka High has thrown the ball four times in this game, 0 for 4 with two interceptions. Now Alejos on a designed roll right. He's got a run pass option. He'll decide to keep it. Turns back up the field at the 20-yard line. Gets wrapped up around the ankles and is dropped at the 25. That's a good gain by Alejos. A pickup of eight on second down and nine. Third and a yard to go for Topeka High. And unfortunately, we have another injured player down on the field, this time for Dodge City. The injury is to inside linebacker Gavin Jones, although he's able to hop up and is trying to walk off the issue, but he'll have to do that over on the sideline. wonder if he just got his bell rung, but he will have to come out for a play. So checking in in his place for Dodge City is Josh Gonzalez. Third down and one for the Trojans. 6.42 on the clock and counting. 
Tyon Alejo stays in at the Wildcat quarterback position. Elijah Williams and Diego Carr, the two backs flanking him right and left, respectively. Two receivers on either side of the formation and a wing in as well. That's Trey Thomas. Snap to Alejos. Slides to the left. He gives off to Williams. And Williams has nowhere to go. Nedler is in the backfield from the jump. It is a big loss for Topeka High. A loss of five yards on the sweep to the left. And it's fourth down and long now for the Trojans. And here comes the punt team. Boy, Nedler had a great read on that. Alejos kept it in the belly of Williams for a long time. But Nedler didn't buy it. and Boy, he nailed him for the big loss. And, boy, Dodge City has come close, if not tipped the punt on pretty much an eight-man rush. And let's see if they do that again. The punt protection team for Topeka High has struggled tonight. Now facing a fourth down and six. Already down 14 nothing. Alejos takes the snap. Rushes right. Just gets this one away. End over end. A quick kick. Bounces at the 44-yard line. It takes it to Topeka High roll into Dodge City territory. And it keeps spinning from there down inside the 42-yard line. So a kick of 38 yards that time by Alejos, about the best he could have asked for with pressure in his face right away once again. Quick score update, second quarter. Baser Lingwood 21, Atchison nothing. Silver Lake 7, Republic County 6. And other scores, Rossville 19, Riverside nothing. Holton leading Santa Fe Trail 32 to 10. First down and 10 for Dodge City, moving from right to left as you listen. Wide side of the field is the right side. There are three wide receivers there for the Demons. One receiver to the left, running back in that direction as well. That running back is going to take the ball. It's Ty Billising who gets it from Nedler, carries it right behind his center, and gets up to the 46-yard line, a pickup of four on first down and 10. Neither team has thrown the ball much in this game so far, Greg, but Dodge City really hasn't needed to because they keep churning out decent yardage play after play on the ground. Yeah, they're uh, Nedler, four of six on the day for 69 yards. Quick update on a couple other scores. Spring Hill, second quarter, leading Shawnee Ike, seven to nothing. Second quarter, Junction City and Free State tied at seven. Interesting score to keep an eye on there with a second down and six coming up for Dodge City. Nedler keeps this time, and he's got nowhere to go. He is stopped at the line of scrimmage. Tackle made by Dadrian Montgomery for Topeka High. Now a third down and six after no gain on the carry for Dodge City and another big moment for the Topeka High defense. Boy, without a doubt, four and a half minutes left to go first half. You'd like to get the ball back. Dodge City already up 14 to nothing, looking to score again here. They turn the ball over on downs on their last possession. After a five-play drive that started at the Topeka High 37. Third down and six, Nedler in the gun. Design roll to the right. He's got a run pass option. He'll throw it to the outside. Completes the pass. He's able to swing it outside to Josh Taylor. Makes up for that drop earlier. Catching the ball for a first down gain up to the 42-yard line of Topeka High. That's a pickup of 12 yards and a first down. 81 yards passing. So far, second reception for Taylor for 25 yards. Dodge City gets right back on the ball. Three wide receivers bunched up to the near side, left side. That's also the wide side of the formation. Nadler crouches down in the gun, calls out a signal, claps his hands, takes the snap. He's going to sweep it to the left. Villasing on the carry. Villasing now turns it up near the left sideline, and Montgomery will grab him from the back pads and throw him to the ground near the sideline. Excellent tackle that time by Montgomery, who has been very busy bringing down ball carriers for Dodge City. That was a pickup up to the... 38 yard line. That's a gain of call it six yards. Second down and four coming up for the Red Demons. 341 on the clock. Nedler takes the snap. This time it's a quarterback draw. Angles to the right, just to the shoulder of his right guard, and he is bottled up after a gain of just one. Nedler gets wrapped up at the 37 yard line. So another crucial third down coming up for the Trojans defense. Well, if they go past here, one thing we have not seen on a regular four-man rush, the big guy has absolutely gotten zero pressure on. When they've had blitzes on, they've been able to get to the quarterback a little more effectively, but a straight four-man rush, they have gotten zero pressure on Nedler. Ball centered between the hashes. Dakota Whitman, the only receiver on the left side of the formation. Ten seconds on the play clock for Dodge City. Nedler goes with the hard count again, but Topeka High is able to hold its water. Down to five on the play clock. Down to four. 
Nedler waiting, fiddling with his helmet down to one. He finally gets the snap off and is going to hand it to Villasing, and Villasing is stopped in the backfield. The linebackers, Diego Carr and Dadrian Montgomery, come up, make the stop, and that is a big tackle on a third down by the Topeka High front seven. Boy, that was huge to be able to get that type of penetration, and Dodge City going to go for it on fourth down. Down to 225 left to go first half. Seventh play of the drive for the Red Demons, who lead by two touchdowns, but are trying to avoid a second straight turnover on downs. Three wide receivers, wide side, bunch right. Nedler in the gun. Design, roll right. Pressure comes from behind him, but he's still got time to throw. Loads up. He wants the end zone. Contested catch. It may have been picked off. No. Dropped at the last second by Jalen Smith, but it's incomplete nonetheless down the far right sideline. And that is two drives in a row that Topeka High is able to get Dodge City to turn it over on down. Well, they wanted that one, but if Nedler would have looked straight ahead, Brendan, he had a ton of room. He didn't have to have that much yardage to get the first down, but Decided he wanted to go deep with it, was committed to throwing it deep. And that's a break for Topeka High. Now they've got 206 to work with left in the first half, three timeouts, but have not had success so far. And it looks like Kennedy is back in at quarterback. BJ Kennedy, the 6'5 freshman, has only taken one snap so far in this game. He's got just over two minutes to work with. And as Greg said, a full Accompaniment of timeout, 62 yards from the end zone. Snap to Kennedy in the gun. Look short left. Now he's throwing deep. He's going down the deep sideline, and it is dropped by Topeka High. He had Naz Phillips on the left numbers, and he just could not haul it in. Matt Freeze, the free safety and coverage. Phillips had to hand fight with him all the way down the field. It was a slight underthrow by Kennedy, but put it near his target. Phillips just couldn't haul it in. Second down and 10 for the Trojans. Boy, they had the right idea. Phillips. Also got away with the push uh, that wasn't called, but nonetheless, boy, you get it right there. You need to catch the football. Topeka High is still looking for its first completed pass of this game. 0 for 5, throwing it so far with a pair of picks. Trailing by 14 points late in the second quarter. Exactly two minutes to go until halftime. Ball in the near right hash. Topeka High moving from left to right as you listen. Kennedy takes the shotgun snap, thinks about a bubble left. Now he's going to sprint to the left, and he's wrapped up and dropped for a sack. The Dodge City defense gets in the backfield again. It's the defensive end, Chance Kerr, six-foot sophomore, wraps up Kennedy for a loss. Third down and long now. Call it 14 yards for the Trojans. 100 seconds to go until the break. Boy, trying to develop. You can see Kennedy trying to read uh, through his progression. Problem was they came through, didn't react in time, and they were able to get him for the sack. First one of the night. Topeka High breaks its huddle with 14 on the play clock, and they are just slowly, gingerly walking to the line, still with three timeouts. Kennedy in the gun, two-by-two two receiver set, running back to his right. Kennedy will give it to Alejos, the running back, shakes off one tackler, dances through a few more, passes the 40-yard line on the left hash, and has eventually dropped at the 43. It's a pickup of nine, and a timeout called on the field by Dodge City with a minute and four seconds to go. Demons up 14-0, and Topeka High is faced with what is likely another punting situation at its own 43-yard line. Yeah, now what do you do? Obviously, you were in a punting situation, but you've had your struggles tonight as far as getting the punts off. So we'll see what they do on the timeout. Some score updates. Holton, second quarter, leading Santa Fe Trail 40-10. Burlington leading Parsons 30-7. Blue Valley Southwest, 14, Emporia, nothing. That, of course, the winner of that game takes on Seaman next week. Piper, 7, Eudora, nothing. And surprising score? Yes, indeed. Second quarter, Al Simpler Stadium, Pre-State, 14, Junction City, 7. That's a Blue Jays team, Greg. We've seen a couple of times this season with their high-flying offense. That is a surprising score. Pre-State, one of the lowest seeds in the 6A West. Yeah, and, and they struggled 0-5 record this year, two bouts of COVID, um, and then got got their you-know-what's handed to them last week. I had a chance to see them last week. So defense came to play tonight, and uh, Jet Dineen at quarterback also looks like has come to play. A minute four to go in the second quarter. Topeka High is looking to punt. Dodge City getting ready to send the house. 
Low snap. It bounces to Alejos. He has to pick it up. He's going to run for it, but he's got nowhere to run. Stopped at the 38-yard line. A loss of five yards after the low snap, the run by Alejos. That play was DOA for the Trojans. And now with 59 seconds to go until halftime, Dodge City has another opportunity to strike, already up 14-0 over Topeka High. Not what Carlos Kelly had designed. Unfortunately, with that, Alejos did what he could. But now a short field, 59 seconds left. Dodge City with two timeouts and about 38 yards to hit pay dirt. Medler in the gun, his running back to the left. Three wide receivers to the wide side right. One receiver left. Medler takes the snap. Kerr runs the wheel from the left side. He's the open target. Wide open on the left sideline. Catches it to 20. Breaks the tackle up inside the 10-yard line. Down to the 8. A gain of 29 yards, a wide open wheel route to the running back, Chance Kerr. First down, Dodge City with goal to go. That was about as wide open as you can get. Nobody on Chance Kerr. 28-yard reception, first and goal. Dodge City right back to the line on the near hash. Nedler takes it, quarterback power, angles to the left, and is thrown down at the six-yard line, a pickup of two as the clock winds down to 35 seconds. Timeout call. Dodge City takes over after the botched punt with great field position. Gets a 29-yard pass play, picks up two more, and then calls a timeout. We will take the timeout with them. It will be a 30-second timeout. You're listening to the Invista Credit Union 580 Preps Game of the Week on 580 WIBW. U.S. Forest Service and the Ag Council. Welcome back to the Invista Credit Union 580 Preps Game of the Week on 580 WIBW and FM News 104.9. Brendan Dworzynski, Greg Akagi with you at Hummer Sports Park. The Topeka High Trojans, the eight seed in the 6A West, facing a tough opponent in the Dodge City Red Demons tonight, the nine seed here in Topeka. Dodge City already up 14-0 with 37 and a half seconds until the break. And threatening once again, facing second and goal to go at the Topeka High six-yard line. Ball's on the near hash. That's the left side of the field. One wide receiver, Dakota Whitman, is on the short side left. Three wide receivers spread out across the right. Chance Kerr, the running back, flanking Nedler to the right. And Nedler, the quarterback in the gun, takes the snap. Design roll to the right side. Looking to the end zone. Looking. Now turning upfield, cuts past the defender, gets popped at the goal line, loses the ball, and it bounces out on the sideline, out through the end zone. What an unbelievable play by the Topeka High defense, but a flag came in behind the run. This is a massive moment late in the first half. 30 seconds on the clock. Nedler fumbled out of the end zone. It is a touchback. Out of bounds, through the end zone. Okay, so they pick up the laundry and Topeka High comes up with a massive defensive play with under a minute to go until the break, forcing the quarterback Alden Nedler to fumble out of the end zone. What a turn of events for the Topeka High defense, which now Greg has made three stops in a row. And you wonder the way the ball popped out if somebody got a helmet on it or just kind of did the pop it from behind to be able to get it out. Smart play, big play, down 14 nothing with 30 seconds left to go here in the first half. And Colin Daniels, the second-string quarterback, is back into the game for the second time with 30 seconds on the clock. Topeka High does have three timeouts, but not a whole lot of time to do anything, and they're going to bunch up behind the quarterback with a heavy eye. Daniels takes it. Gives to one of the up man. It's Diego Carr. Carr fights his way ahead to the 24-yard line. A pickup of four. No more whistles. And that is going to do it for the first half. In eventful second quarter, no points for the Topeka High Trojans. But their defense has kept them in this game. Trailing Dodge City 
14 to zero on the opening night of the Kansas State High School football playoffs. And that will take us officially to halftime. We'll take a two minute break when we come back on the other side of this timeout. We'll get you a scoring and drive summary from the first half. We'll get you a statistical update as well and check on some scores for our city teams and teams throughout our broadcast area. That's coming up in two minutes.
really struggling against the special teams for Dodge City in that opening half. Yeah, and this is and, and you know, field position is something else that where Topeka High has just had horrible field position throughout this entire game. Some of it self inflicted because the penalties are even like uh, Tylen Alejos when he didn't pick up the kickoff and let it bounce and then his coverage broke down and he can only get it back up to about the 15 yard line. Topeka High will be kicking away to start the second half, kicking toward the south end zone, which means that Dodge City will be moving from right to left across your radio dial. Freshman Josiah Mack is out to kick the ball away. Approaches the ball slowly at the 40-yard line, puts his right toe into it. It is a pooch kick that is caught at the 40-yard line by Dodge City. No fair catch. Tackle made by Topeka High just about a yard and a half ahead of the line where it was caught. So Mac tries to get tricky with the kick. And the 41-yard line is where Dodge City will start this next drive. Up 14-0 to begin this third quarter. Now, that wasn't a bad idea as far as catching them off guard. But now it's on your defense uh, at the 42-yard line, just inside the 42-yard line for a first and 10. Boy, you'd love to get just a straight three and out right here if this high defense can bow up. Alden Nedler, the quarterback in the gun. Ball is on the far right hash. One wide receiver on either side of the formation. Inverted full house on first down. Nedler takes it, starts going right, then hands it back to the left. Carried by Chance Kerr on first down. Runs right through the middle along the hash mark. Gets past the 50 up to the 48-yard line. That's a pickup of exactly 10, enough to move the chains. First down, Dodge City. Yeah, once again, this time they went over the right side of that line with that robust backfield, that inverted uh, power front with the uh, two blockers up just about a yard uh, behind the offensive line. Exact same formation for Dodge City on another first down and 10, up 14 nothing. This time, Nedler keeps it and is tripped up at about the 44. He stumbles ahead up to the 40. That's a pickup of eight. But if not for the play made underneath, Jacob Jackson, among the other players for Topeka High, who got in on the trip, that could have been a disaster for the Topeka High defense. Boys. Second down and two now for Dodge City. The holes are just cavernous up front. Nedler again in the gun, this time running back to his right. It's a give this time, running in that direction. Kerr sweeps to the left and is able to pick up the first down up to the 37-yard line, a gain of three on second down and two. And once again, the Red Demon is able to move the sticks. Yep, and keeping with that offense. That You know, one thing they've been able to do is stay pretty good as far as their tempo is concerned. They get right back up to the line. They don't take much time as far as... Once they get set, they go. Kerr now flips back to the left side. First down and 10. Just over a minute gone in the third quarter. Ball centered between the hashes. Nedler keeps it. Fakes right. Goes back to the left. Flag on the play as Nedler gets inside the 30 down to the 26. He came down hard on his right shoulder on a tackle made by Jalen Smith, the safety. But there is laundry way back at the early part of the play. And it is a hold against Dodge City. So wipe off a 12-yard run. And instead of another first and 10 inside the 30, it will be first and more than 20 for Dodge City. Yeah, they're going to get it uh, about two yards from the original line of scrimmage. So Nedler has that effort and that hard hit he took on the back end of the play from Smith. All go for naught. Ball is now repositioned. All the way back at the 47-yard line. So a loss of about nine yards officially on the penalty. So call that a first and 19 with 10.40 to go in the third. Dodge City facing first down and long, but leading by 14. Power set once again. Ball centered between the hashes as Nedler takes a snap. Hands on a sweep to Kerr. Kerr is wrapped up and banged down at the 42-yard line. Trey Thomas in on the stop for Topeka High. Gain of five yards on the carry. Second down and 14 coming up for the Demons. Yeah, for right now, just keep it on the ground. You've been able to get pretty decent yardage. And they stay in that uh, inverted uh, power formation. Matt Freeze is the wide receiver on the wide side left. He's the only receiver out there. Nedler still in the gun with the inverted full house in front of him. Nedler takes it. Fakes the hand up this time. Looking down the left sideline. He wants freeze, and it is up and caught all the way inside the five-yard line. A great throw by Nedler. Maybe his prettiest rainbow spiral of the day. Freeze reaches out, catches it, cutting back to the middle, and he's down at the three-yard line. First down and goal for Dodge City. Well, that was a beautiful, beautiful thrown ball. 
Great fake once again. Kerr, or excuse me, Freeze, now his third reception of the night. Call that a gain of 39 through the air. First and goal from the three for Dodge City. Already up two scores. Nedler takes it. Quarterback power right through the middle. And he gets hammered just a few inches beyond the line of scrimmage. A group of Trojans in on the stop right there. It is second down and goal with a short distance to go for the Demons. 9-18 on the clock in the third. Nedler on that last long pass play to freeze. The leading receiver this year for Dodge City came into this one just shy of 600 yards. Made a nice catch on the beautiful throw. Second down and goal. Nedler takes it. Sweep handoff going to the left. Dodge City into the end zone. Chance curve for the second time. Touchdown, Demons. And with 8.58 to go in the third quarter, Dodge City is able to add to its lead once again on the sweep to the left. Kerr takes it in, 20-0. Red Demons with the lead over the Trojans. Well, they just are impressive as uh, what they're able to do, especially inside the tackles where they've made most of their hay tonight rushing. Estevante on for the extra point. The hold is down. The kick is up end over end, and it is through the uprights. Just under nine minutes to go in the third quarter. 21 to nothing. Dodge City leads to Pika High here on the Invista Credit Union 580 Preps Game of the Week on 580 WIBW. Liberty Mutual Insurance Company presents. And Doug. Larger. Welcome back to Hummer Sports Park, the Invista Credit Union 5 Preps Game of the Week. Topeka High now down 21 to nothing against Dodge City on the opening night of the high school football playoffs in Kansas, following the third touchdown drive and second touchdown rush for Chance Kerr on the game. The ensuing kickoff caught at the six-yard line by Jalen Smith for Topeka High. Takes a slight cut to the left, gets past the 20-yard line on the return, is stopped at the 24 on the far left hash. That is where the Topeka High offense will take over with its first drive of the second half. And running out onto the field is the backup quarterback, Colin Daniels, for his third drive of the game. And Daniels, just that one pass attempt and one interception. It'll be interesting to see if they keep it on the ground, but down 21 to nothing. They bring in some extra beef on the play. Jacob Jackson checking into the game. As Daniels gets the play call late from the sideline, we're down to 15 seconds on the play clock before a first down and 10. And with 11, Topeka High finally breaks the huddle. Trojans get up. Daniels goes under center. Heavy eye behind him. Play clock down to three, down to two, down to one. Daniels finally takes the snap, hands it off to Alejos. He bounces out to the left side. Patient run, waits for a hole. Finally, will jet ahead up to the 28-yard line, a pickup of four for Tylen Alejos. Second down and six coming up for the Trojans. Boy, this is a pattern that we have seen throughout the entire night and not getting the play in until late, snapping it how many times with less than five seconds left to go on the play clock. Daniels comes back into the huddle with the play call once again. Play clock goes under 20. Dodge City is ready for the snap, and Topeka High just breaking the huddle with 14 on the play clock. Moving at a slow pace, trying to get their offense in a rhythm. Once again, a heavy eye with the extra back to the right behind Daniels. This time it's an inside give. Diego Carr on the carry, plows into the pile and gets stuffed at the 30. That's enough for two yards to set up a manageable third down and four for the Topeka High offense. But third down has been a conflict down for the Trojans so far in this game. Yeah, they need something here. Once again, it's you got to establish some type of a drive. They really had one sustained drive in that first half and trying to get it one here to start out the second half. Seven and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Dodge City up 21-0 to peak a high at its own 30-yard line. Ball in the far left hash, facing a third down and four, moving from left to right as you listen. Daniels 
Now, another hand off Alejos. Bounces to the left. Waits, and he gets wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. He fought ahead for maybe an extra half yard. But right there, Alden Nedler comes in and makes the stop. And we've got a flag on the field at the end of the play as well, lying on the 30-yard line. Interesting call here. Nedler was a little high with the tackle. Not sure if that will be the ruling here. Offense. The penalty declined. Fourth down. So instead, it is a penalty against the offensive line for Topeka High. It's declined, though, with a fourth and four coming up. And Topeka High, Greg, is for the moment leaving the offense on the field. Oh, now they're going to put in punt team. And once again, Dodd City has pretty much come full bore with an eight-man rush. The offensive line has not been able to do much either on special teams for protection or on the offensive side of things. Down to 6.45 to go in the third. It's a high snap over Alejos' head. He can't haul it in, tries to scoop it up, eventually does inside the 10, and there is a caravan of Red Demons right there waiting for him down near the five-yard line. Alejos gets swallowed up. They will rule the plate dead at the nine. The bodies in the pile ended up at the five, so a silver lining, if you can even call it that, for Topeka High. But that is, Greg, the second bad snap on a punt. And again, it causes a turnover on downs after the botch. And Dodge City is set up with a first and goal at the nine. Well, the previous punt that they had, the ball was bounced to them. So this time, did it way too strong, way over the head of Alejos. Power formation on first down and goal. Nedler takes the snap. He hands it off. Chance Kerr bouncing off right tackle, heading into the end zone. No one touches him. Touchdown, Dodge City. And the route is on here in Topeka. 27 to nothing. The Red Demons take the lead on the third rushing score of the night for Chance Kerr of Dodge City. Yeah, pretty simple. Off right tackle. And no one touches you until you get to the goal line. And Kerr gets his third touchdown of the night. Estevante looking for his fourth extra point of the game. Three for three so far. It's 6.31 on the clock. Snap is a little bit low. The hold is good and the kick is blocked. Just the second missed extra point of the season for Estevante. Blocked that time by a group of Trojans up front. Got the mitts up there and knocked it down. We'll take a quick timeout. 6.31 to go in the third. Dodge City leading 27-0 over Topeka High on the Invista Credit Union 580 Preps Game of the Week on 580 WIBW. Back on the Invista Credit Union 5D Preps Game of the Week, Brendan Dworzinski, Greg Akagi, and Jake Laban with you at Hummer Sports Park here in Topeka where the Topeka High Trojans are trailing 27 to nothing. A one-play touchdown drive for Dodge City, a nine-yard run by Chance Kerr, his third touchdown of the night, made it a four-score game. And now Estevante kicking it away to Topeka High. Ball fielded at the seven-yard line for the Trojans. It's Jalen Smith, who starts on the left side of the field, bounces it all the way back out to the right sideline, passes the 25, and gets just beyond the 30-yard line up to the 32. That's probably the best play all day for Topeka High, either offensively or on special teams. A return of about 26 yards up to the 32-yard line. Some updated scores to give you third quarter. Silver Lake leading Republic County. 35 to 6. St. Mary's beating McLeod 30 to 8. And Holton right now, third quarter, beating up on Santa Fe Trail 62 to 10. Tylen Alejos back in at Wildcat quarterback for the Trojans with 623 to go in the third period, facing a four touchdown hole. Trojans have not scored in this game. Best field position of the game so far, though, for Topeka High. Second best, check that, at the Trojans' own 32-yard line. Two receivers to the wide side left as the Trojans move from left to right. 
Alejos takes the snap, makes an inside give, and will bounce out to the left, gets one block, tries to fight through a few defenders, and gets three yards up to the 35-yard line before he is dragged down by the ankles. Short gain by Alejos there, a former 580 Sports Talk, Wendy's High School oh. Athlete of the Week this season. Alejos, though, he has an issue. He's down. He tried to get up and then went back down on the field. One of the coaches pointed out to him, and he's banging his fist on the turf. Well, he reached, it looked like, in the groin area, or maybe groin or hamstring. I don't know if it's a cramp or another issue, but he tried to walk, took a couple of steps, and then went straight down onto the turf. Yeah, Jake, what does it look like down there on the field to you? It's definitely cramped. The left calf looks like it is cramping up. And again, it's not uh, it's not warm, but it's down to about 57 degrees right now. Again, not much breeze at all here at Hummer Sports Park. If there is, it's coming from the south now, but uh, it is a cramp. Uh, actually, it's cramping both legs. They're working on his left and his right calf right now here on uh, the hash at about the 35-yard line. Appreciate that, Jake. Hopefully, Tywin Alejo is able to work those out quickly and get back on the field. And now, Greg, we have already experienced a number of quarterback changes on and off throughout this game. And with Alejo having to come off with those cramps, and he is gingerly walking off the field now with a bit of a hobble, we are going to get our first mid-drive quarterback switch since the first quarter. Yeah, being able to do that. And, boy, Alejo, that's a big loss not only offensively but defensively as well. Uh, one other updated score, 80 yard touchdown pass by Junction City. Now they lead third quarter, 21 to 14, but uh, much more competitive game than I think a lot of people thought up at Al Simpler Stadium in Junction City. After Alejos gets off the field, 602 and counting on the clock here at Hummer Sports Park, second down and seven for the Topeka High Trojans. It is a give to Diego Carr. Carr tries pitching it back on a run. He's thrown down in the backfield. The ball pops out, and it is a humongous loss for Topeka High and a turnover as well. Jake Laban, that was an absolute abject disaster on the field in the backfield. And it shouldn't be a fumble. No question, Carr was knee was down in my view. I had about the same angle as the white hat. It came out real, real late. I mean, real late. His knee were down. He tried to flip it back. I'm surprised, but the official thought clearly it was a fumble. He threw the beanbag, but him and I disagree on that call. No review, of course, in high school football of the play. So Dodge City with 5.50 to go in the third quarter is back in business at the Topeka High 24-yard line, and High needs a timeout. We will take it with them. Dodge City with a 27-0 lead on the Invista Credit Union 580 Preps Game of the Week on 580 WIBW. Welcome back to the Invista Credit Union 5 Preps Game of the Week. Brendan Dworzynski and Greg Akagi with you in the booth. And after another turnover by the Topeka High offense on a fumble by running back Diego Carr, Dodge City takes over inside the 25-yard line at the 24 of Topeka High. It has been all Red Demons so far in this game, including in this third quarter. They've so far run eight plays in the quarter. They have two touchdown runs by Chance Kerr. Scores from two yards out and nine yards out. That has made our game 27 to nothing as the Topeka High defense is rushed back out onto the field. First down and 10 from the far right hash for Dodge City at the 24-yard line. It's an inside give on a sweep. And once again, it is Chance Kerr, who is having a career day, gets all the way up inside the 20 down to the 16-yard line. A pickup of eight on the first down carry off right tackle. 51 yards, nine carries by Kerr. Kerr also has a 28-yard uh, reception as well. So you have close to 100 yards of total offense. Over 200 yards rushing on the season with his performance today. He takes another hand up, tries bouncing to the right again. This time he is swallowed up at the line of scrimmage, however. 
Topeka High that time had a bead on the running back and was able to stop the sophomore for no gain. Third down and two upcoming for Dodge City, leading by 27 points, pitching a shutout right now with five minutes left in the third. Quick updated score, Washburn Rural 14, Wichita West 6, that in the third quarter. A defensive battle down in the air capital tonight, and on third down and two for the third time today, Dodge City goes with a hard count, and this time it works. George Reyes Bolaños, junior linebacker off the left edge for Topeka High, jumped into the neutral zone, and that gives a free first down to the Red Demons. I go back to something Carlos Kelly said uh, for Topeka High, just not locked in, and it, it's been like that all night long for Topeka High. Another mental error right there to allow Dodge City to get a first down. Red Demons move the ball up to the 11-yard line, facing a first and 10. They can get a first down without scoring here on this drive. Nedler in the gun, takes a snap, no drop, throws a slate over the middle, caught by Matt Freeze, fights for the goal line, through a defender, he's in! Touchdown, Dodge City! Matt Freeze, two touchdown receptions, two interceptions on a career night for Dodge City's leading receiver, and the Red Demons continue to pile on here, 33-0, to 421 to go in the third quarter. Nice pass. Uh, freeze once again. Boy, what a night he is having on both sides of the football. Second touchdown pass for Nedler, and both of them go to Freeze tonight. Estevante looking to make up for that last blocked extra point. This time it's a fake. They go Philly special style with it, and Freeze throws for the end zone, but it's a worm burner at the feet of his intended target incomplete. They went with some trickery but it does not work for the Red Demons. But nonetheless, they add six more points onto the deficit. 33 to nothing, 421 to play. You're listening to the Invista Credit Union 580 Preps Game of the Week on 580 WIBW. Jackar Blankenship Estate Land of Farm Auction, Saturday morning, October 31st, 10 o'clock. 324 Traders Avenue, Fall River, Kansas. Marshall Auction and Realty.com. Four tracks, Elk and Greenwood County Farm Land and Grants Land sell. Brendan Dwarzinski, Greg Akaki, and Jake LeBon with you at Hummer Sports Park. 421 to go in the third quarter. It is all Dodge City Red Demons up 33 to nothing over Topeka High. The most recent score, a three-play drive that took just about one minute and a half, capped off by an 11-yard touchdown pass from Alden Nedler to Matt Freeze, his second touchdown reception of the ball game, to extend it to a five-score game. Now on the ensuing kickoff, it is kicked deep once again. Jalen Smith catches it, turning around at his five-yard line. Races to the middle, now bounces out to the left along the far hash. Tries to break it out to the sideline, and he is stopped at the 17. Excellent kick coverage by the special teams for Dodge City. They stop Smith, and he is down at the 17-yard line. One good sign for Topeka High, Greg, is that Tylen Alejos is ready to get back in the game. Trying to see who the quarterback will be. Colin Daniels ran near the field stopped and is now just camped out on the sideline. And he will stay out of the game, and Alejos will go in as the Wildcat quarterback. Yeah, just they need to, anything to do consistency-wise, which they have not had all night, had a couple of turnovers in this third quarter. So nothing so far has gone right for Topeka High here in the second half. Ball on the left hash. That's the far side of the field. Topeka High moving from left to right across your radio dial. Alejos takes the snap. Sweep handoff going to the right. Elijah Williams keeps angling before cutting up field, passing the 20-yard line up to the 21, a gain of four on first and 10. Elijah Williams, who was busy in the first quarter, has been quiet ever since, but picks up four yards on the first down carry. And centers the ball between the hashes for the second down snap as we take under four minutes to go in this 33-point game in the third quarter. Updated score, apparently Compton, late third quarter, leading Rock Creek 35-14 to on a Thad Metcalf 51-yard touchdown run. Perry LeCompton looking to set up a rematch with the Hayden Wildcats coming up in Perry next week, should those results hold currently. Play clock down to five on second and six. Four to peak high, down to two. Alejos just gets the snap off before handing to Williams, who angles right, tries fighting back to the middle, and he's got nowhere to go. 
maybe a yard on the carry by Williams, but he ran into traffic and got mowed down. Third down and a medium distance of five yards to go for the Trojans. Boy, trying it outside, trying it inside. Dodge City, defensive-wise, been able to swarm to the football, have multiple people there. Williams just trying to find any type of opening, trying to break tackles, not able to, got a yard out of it. This is the third play of the drive upcoming for Topeka High on its third drive of the third quarter. It is the eighth offensive play for the Trojans in this period. Third down and five. Snap high to Alejo. Fakes the handoff. He keeps it, trying to wriggle through some defenders, and he's got nowhere to go. Forward progress will grant him the 23-yard line. But once again, Greg, the physical presence of the defensive line for Dodge City is able to force a run of very little yardage and set up a fourth down for Topeka High. Yeah, and here's the problem with that, too. You had your linemen go about four yards and then just stop not carrying their blocks through to create an opening as well. So that's not going to help because the defenders can just get off of those blocks and find the opening. And now they have to punt the football where the last two snaps on punts have not gotten cleanly to Alejos. One that bounced into his arms, one that went over his head. Two minutes to go in the third as the clock continues to wind. Another high snap. Alejos has to back up for it. Eventually gets it off. It is a short one, end over end, a little squibber, really, but it takes a slight Topeka high bounce and gets up just past the 34 yard line. So it's only an 11 yard punt. Alejos was lucky to even get that one off. And Greg, you can tell he is absolutely gassed out there playing linebacker, running back, quarterback, and punter today. Yeah, he, no, you know, cramping up as well, had to come off for a couple of plays, running for his life, basically when he punts the football, and he's had to do that the entire night. And once again, great field position for Dodge City. Ball of the Topeka High, 34-yard line, a minute 49 to go in the third quarter as the snap goes to the backup quarterback for Dodge City, Tucker Smith, who has started most of this season. In fact, he was just benched after week six. Six touchdown passes, 10 interceptions on the year before he was replaced by Nedler in the starting lineup. His first snap is waved off for a procedural penalty against the offensive line. So first down and 15 now for Dodge City. Within the gun, hands it off. Chance Kerr bounces to the right side. He is wrapped up and thrown down to the ground. Tackle made by Jeff Moore, the center for the offense, the Emotional and vocal senior leader for Topeka High switches into the defensive side and makes the play. It's a gain of just one yard on first and 15, so make it second down and 14 with the ball on the far right hash. Smith waits again, power formation with two blockers ahead. Smith will hand it off this time. Kerr angles left and will cut back up between left guard and left tackle. Alejos in on the stop for Topeka High as the carry by Kerr gets up to the 33-yard line. It is third down and long now for Dodge City after the gain of five on the second and long carry. Dodge City races right back to the line. They've got one receiver freeze isolated on the wide side left. That's the near side of the formation, still with two blockers ahead, one wide receiver right as well. Smith fakes a handoff. Keeper this time tries to cut back to the right, and he's chopped down in the backfield. Another good tackle around the knees by Tylen Alejos, who has had to be Mr. Do-It-All for Topeka High tonight. Does a great job forcing a tackle for loss on that play, dropping Dodge City back to the 34-yard line, and we're down to 30 seconds left in the third quarter with about a four-second differential between play clock and game clock. Dodge City keeping the offense out on fourth down and 10. Smith in the gun. Takes a three-step drop, looking right. Staring that way the whole way. Fires near the sticks. Completes a pass just inside the 25-yard line. Fires a missile right onto the chest of the senior, Josh Taylor. Fights inside of the defensive back. That was Isaiah Kincaid in coverage, and Taylor fights to make the grab and get the first down with 10 seconds left and counting in the third quarter. Nice pass, like you said. He had him dialed in all the way, but no one there for Topeka High, just an, off of enough coverage, and Tucker, his third reception of the night. The Red Demons will sit on these final 10 seconds. That will take us to the fourth quarter. Put your four fingers up. We're headed to the last period of play. 
33 to 0. Dodge City leads Topeka High on the first night of the Kansas high school football playoffs. You're listening to the Invista Credit Union 580 Preps Game of the Week on 580 WIBW. Right now. And uh, still, latest score we have, Washburn Rural leading Wichita West 14-6. to Second and goal from the 10. Handoff, Chance Kerr angling left, fights through one hole, gets past another tackler, into the end zone. Touchdown, Red Demons. Touchdown, Chance Kerr. His fourth score of the game with 10.41 to go. 39 to nothing. Dodge City with the lead. And after the score, another player is down for Topeka High. A little bit slow to get up. It is a war of attrition out there tonight. As it is Jeff Moore, who is slowly coming off the field with one of Topeka High's trainers. The score counts nonetheless. Chance Kerr has been phenomenal in this game. That is a 10-yard touchdown scamper by the sophomore running back. His third score of the second half, fourth overall. 
That's Devontae on for the extra point attempt out of the hold of Smith to make it a 40-point game. Low snap. The hold saves it. The kick is up, and it is no good. So Estevante came into this game having kicked 14 to 15 extra points on the season, but he's missed two tonight with 10.41 to go in the game. It's 39-0 Dodge City over Topeka High. We'll take a break. You're listening to the Invista Credit Union 580 Preps Game of the Week on 580 WIBW. Preps game of the week. Brendan Dwarzinski and Greg Akagi with you at Hummer Sports Park up in the booth. It has been all Dodge City Red Demons tonight with a 39 to nothing advantage over Topeka High. The Trojans will get the ball back. Jalen Smith and Tylen Alejos deep to return for Topeka High as the kickoff is coming from Isaac Estevante. Puts his right hand up. Approaches the ball and sent it down toward the south end zone in the direction of Alejos. It is a short kick. It bounces to the 20, checks back. It is a live ball near the far sideline. There is a scramble for it, and the officials rule Went out of bounds. that it is uh, Tylen Alejos, who is able to dive back on top of the ball for Dodge or for Topeka High, pardon me, near the far sideline. So a lucky break that yeah. time for the Trojans. Yeah, that ball had that backspin, kind of like in golf when you have backspin and it spins back. It Hit, had the backspin, went back, and they had to scramble for it. And Alejos, yeah, thought it went out of bounds, but he was able to grab it before it went out of bounds and keep possession as they started their own 25. Isaac Estevante must have been watching Johnny Hecker, the punter of the Los Angeles Rams, from that game on Monday night. And he had a bunch of punts that landed inside the 10 with that same kind of backspin technique. First down and 10 at the 25-yard line for Topeka High. Ball in the far right hash. Two wide receivers wide side left. B.J. Kennedy, the freshman, back in at quarterback. Two-step drop. Looking right now, he's going to run for it. But before he can cross the line of scrimmage, before he can even get back to the line of scrimmage, he is dropped for a sack. It's Santonio Turner, 6'2", 280-pound senior who gets in, makes first contact, and will get credit with the sack. It's a loss of five for Topeka High, second and 15 coming up as we approach 10 minutes to go in the game. Second sack for Dodge City tonight. By the way, Topeka High just 34 yards of total offense through three quarters. Dodge City 293 yards. Only two players have scored, Kerr with four touchdowns and Freeze with two touchdown receptions. Been an intense struggle for Topeka High all night, just... Under 40 yards, as Greg said, they average over 220 a game. Now on second and 15, Kennedy going for an all deep. He's got Nash Phillips, catches it, and he's going to stumble down on the left sideline inside the 30. Nash Phillips reaches out, grabs the ball back by about the 45, stumbles a little bit, but picks up the biggest offensive play of the day for the Topeka High Trojans. It's a gain of 51 yards for Nash Phillips. That is the longest catch of the year for him. Uh, just one yard. He had a 50-yard touchdown catch all the way back in week four. That was the longest play of the game, only the second double-digit gain. Alejos had 11 yards on his first carry tonight. That's been it as far as double-digit gains. Kennedy coming out slinging here in this fourth quarter. First down and 10 from the 29-yard line. Kennedy in the gun on the near side, throws it to his right. A nice little stop route at the 24-yard line, completes the pass to Isaiah Kincaid. Crosses the 25-yard line, a gain of five, maybe six after an extension at the end. That is what they will give Kincaid on the reach. The clock continues to wind down, 8.45 to go in the ball game, a 39-0 lead for Dodge City. We owe you station identification. We'll get you that here in just a moment on the Invista Credit Union 580 Preps Game of the Week. Topeka High looking for its first points of the game. They come out with trips to the left. That's the wide side of the field. Ball just inside the far right hash. Two wide receivers right. It's an empty set for Kennedy. 
High snap, looking left the whole way. Steps up, throws to the end zone, wants a Lejos. It's on the back shoulder and incomplete. Contact in the end zone, Alejos and Ty Villasing running into each other near the goal line. Incidental contact, it's incomplete. And it's now third down and four for the Trojans. Let's take those 10 seconds right now for station identification. You're listening to the Investor Credit Union 5 d Preps Game of the Week. Stay connected with the news you need from 580 WIBW Topeka, WIBWnewsnow.com, and FM News 104.9. 819 to go in the fourth quarter. Topeka High trailing Dodge City 39 0. But at the 24-yard line of Dodge City, facing a third down and four. B.J. Kennedy takes a high snap, tries handing to Diego Carr, and he is swallowed up in the backfield. Nothing going for Diego Carr in this one. Officially, it's a loss of two yards back to the 26-yard line, and it's fourth down for Topeka High. By the way, Greg, this is now the longest drive of the second half for Topeka High, the second longest of the game overall. That was the fifth play of the possession. Yeah, it might be their I'm trying to think if that's their deepest penetration that they've had as well, uh, getting it right out to the Dodge City 27-yard line. Clock continues to tick down, 740 now showing. In a six-score game, B.J. Kennedy has Diego Carr flanking him to his left. Two-by-two two receiver set, ball just inside the far right hash. Kennedy takes it. Design roll to the left. Throws to the sideline. It's up looking for Phillips. It's a little bit high. He jumps for it, and he gets knocked out of the air by Villasing. A nice form hit by Villasing to force the incompletion and to force the turnover on downs with 7.25 to play. Dodge City up 39 zip. By the way, the winner of this game will take on Lawrence High, fourth quarter. Lawrence High beating Wichita North 66 to nothing. The uh, Seaman score uh, or game that they're of interest in fourth quarter blue valley southwest 27 emporia 14 riley county beating smoky valley 55 to 16 third quarter junction city 28 free state 14 dodge city takes over at its own 26 yard line tucker smith in at quarterback a sweep handoff on first down give to the outside it's a carry this time by stone wilson sweeping to the left gets up past the 30 yard line to the 32 a gain of six yards on first down. As Dodge City continues to milk the clock, down near seven minutes to go, up by six scores. They have worn down this Topeka High defense, which has played a solid game, but has been on the field for a lot of the action tonight. Second down, another sweep handoff, and nothing doing this time, going back to the right. Swallowed up in the backfield. Stop that time made by Zion Fulton for Topeka High. Senior linebacker into the game makes the stop, tackle for loss. And it is a third down and long coming up for the Red Demons back inside the 30 yard line at the 29. The yard line to gain is the 37. So it's officially a third down and eight. After a loss of four on the carry that time by Wilson. Tucker Smith in no rush to get the play call in. Little sugar hug, huddle broken with 13 on the play clock, and it now ticks down to seven, down to six. Smith on the far sideline, on the far hash mark, fakes a handoff, tries running back to his left, and he is eaten up in the backfield and taken down to the ground. Another loss on the play. Dodge City going backwards this time. Dadrian Montgomery up and makes the stop. Leading tackler in this game for Topeka High. Makes the stop back inside the 25. It's a loss of five on the carry. So back-to-back -back runs that go for negative four and negative five, and Dodge City will have to punt. Have they, they punted the football tonight? This is the first punt of the game yeah. for Dodge City. With just five and a half minutes to play, play clock down to 10. The Red Demons can milk off every second possible here with a 39-second lead. Snap is good, kicked away, and it is a short punt. It bounces at the 46-yard line, takes it to peak a high hop back inside the 45 for being checked up and touched down at the 43. A 19-yard punt to peak a high with it at the 43-yard line. That is the best field position of the night for the Trojans. By far, absolutely. Prior to that, their best starting mark was their own 38 late in the second quarter. 
Five minutes and 13 seconds to play. Score might be academic at this point for Dodge City, which means they will take on the Lawrence Chesty Lions in Lawrence coming up next week. The Lions pouring it on Wichita North tonight. It's B.J. Kennedy in at quarterback. Ball on the near side, left hash. Three wide receivers and a wing right. One receiver to the left. Kennedy going deep again on first down. He throws it to no one, and the ball is picked off by who else? The free safety, Matt Freeze, playing center field, runs under the ball like a punt, and intercepts it for the third time tonight at the 25-yard line. Well, that was when he just floated up there. You're playing center field as far as the safety is concerned. That's one that's easy for you to pick. And, boy, Freeze, uh, career nights. Freeze and Kerr have had outstanding nights tonight. Freeze on the defensive side, not uh, not only offensive side, but the defensive side, too. That was the third interception thrown by Topeka High this evening, won by each of the three quarterbacks who has played. Colin Daniels, Tyler Alejos, and B.J. Kennedy have each thrown a pick in this contest tonight. 5.06, ball is on the far left hash for Dodge City. Tucker Smith into the game at quarterback. A bunch of three receivers to the wide side right. It's a quarterback power draw on first down. Smith plows into the line and gets up to the 28-yard line. It's a gain of three as the clock continues to wind, and it is the enemy of the Topeka High Trojans right now. Jeff Moore in on the stop on that last carry. This is now the sixth drive of the second half for Dodge City. The first four all ended in touchdowns. The most recent one ended in a punt, but the Red Demons got the ball right back after the Kennedy pick. Same formation on second down and seven. Under four and a half to play. 39 to nothing. Dodge City with the lead over Topeka High as Tucker Smith crouches down and takes the snap. Looking left the whole way. It's a slant. He throws it a little hot for his receiver, Dakota Whitman. Pops through his hands incomplete, so the clock will stop with 4.18 to go. And a third down and seven now facing the Red Demons. Last score we had with Hayden and Sabetha about midway through the third quarter. Hayden leading Sabetha 35-6. to six. So Hayden likely now to advance on to a much-anticipated rematch with the Perry LeCompton cause in Perry. Just a couple weeks ago, that game ended 10-0 here in Topeka. Meanwhile, our game in Topeka tonight, third down and seven, Dodge City. A sweep handoff going to the right. It's Wilson, and Wilson is chopped down at the 26-yard line. It's a loss of two on the third and seven carry. Tylen Alejos up to make the stop. And it is fourth down for the Red Demons, and they will punt for the second time tonight under four to play. Correction on that. Do have another updated score. 6.51 left in the game. Hayden, 42, and Sabeth, the six. Lawrence High, it is a final, beating Wichita North 66-6. to six. So Lawrence advances on to the second round in another home game coming up next Friday night. You face, likely, Dodge City as a 39-point lead with 3.33 to play. High snap and the punt by Estevante for Dodge City. It is caught at the 45-yard line. And Topeka High is thrown down right there. Isaiah Kincaid comes up and makes a running catch at the 45 and is just thrown ahead to the 48. With three minutes and 23 seconds to go, Topeka High facing an uphill climb here. And the quarterback situation still to be determined. Looks like Daniels. Yes, it will be Colin Daniels, the senior. will get another drive out there. So after not punting the entire game, the backups come in for Dodge City, and they punt on back-to-back -back possessions. And now Topeka High has it just on its own side of the midfield stripe with 3.23 on the clock, moving from right to left as you listen, trailing 39-0. Daniels in the gun, two wide receivers to the short side right, one wide receiver, Phillips to the left. It's a high snap over the head of Daniels and diving on it in the backfield. Topeka High is able to recover it. But it's all the way back at the 35-yard line. That is a loss of 13 yards on the play. Elijah Williams went back and was able to jump on it right away. It looked like he might have been going in the direction of some kind of reverse on the play, but it fell apart right at the jump. 
Got nothing you can do there. Another bad snap. And boy, that's a theme of the night. Daniels had uh, really no chance to be able to corral that. And they were able to get it, but after a big loss. Second play of the drive coming up. Second down and 23 for the Trojans. Uh, two wide receivers stack on the short side right. Two wide receivers wide side left. Daniels in the gun looking left the whole way. Tosses a swing pass out to the near side. Tylen Alejos with his sixth catch of the season. Gets up past the 35-yard line to the 38. A gain of just three yards on the swing pass to Alejos. Six catches now, 13 yards on the season. And it is third down and 20 for the Trojans. Trailing by 39. The clock continues to wind, approaching two minutes left in the ball game in the first round of the state playoffs. Daniels in the gun, Alejos flanks him to the right, two wide receivers to the wide side right, a stack of two to the left. Daniels takes it, three-step drop, happy feet on the delivery, tosses it outside, Alejos has it at the 35, tries cutting back up field toward the middle, bounces through some defenders, puts up a valiant effort, carries four different defenders with him, and he's able to reach the 43-yard line, a pickup of five on third down and 20. But that was the effort of about a 20-yard pickup that time by Alejos. He just doesn't get much yardage out of it. Yeah, fighting to the very end, Tylen Alejos. We're down under one and a half minutes to play. In fact, we're down to 80 seconds left in this one. A fourth down and 15 coming up for the Trojans. And Topeka High leaves the offense out there. One more snap for the senior quarterback, Colin Daniels. Runs the play out from the sideline. 15 yards to go. Topeka High to extend this drive needs to reach the Dodge City 42. I'll give you a couple updated scores from some Tenno League's teams here after this play. Two-by-two two receiver set, and we have a timeout called on the field by Topeka High with 54 seconds to play in this 39-point game. Now, Greg, we can get those how updated about, scores. How about we do it now? Fourth quarter score, Washburn Rural still leading Wichita West 14-6. to six, And Manhattan, oh, they had a tough one against Garden City in game one of the season. It's the same here. Uh at Seco Park, Manhattan 21, Garden City 14, Rossville and Riley County, they are leading smoke are beating Smoky Valley 55 to 16 tonight. Let's see if we can get another updated score as far as Manhattan is concerned. Nope, does not look like uh, we were able to actually updated score Washburn Rural. Washburn Rural 21. Wichita West 6, that game still, no, that's a final, excuse me, just got that, uh, saw that tweet from Penny Lane, so Washburn Rural gets the victory on the road, 21-6. to That's a phenomenal win for Steve Bueller's group tonight, that is a big win for that program that has fought hard all season, doesn't have necessarily the regular season wins to show for it, but that is a tough team, a physical team, and they pick up a playoff win tonight. Meanwhile, it's 4th and 15 here in Topeka, Colin Daniels goes with the end around, it's Elijah Williams on the carry going around left end, and he is bottled up at the 46-yard line. It's a pickup of three on fourth down and 15, and with 45 seconds left to play, Dodge City will take over two knees from a playoff victory. So that was the end-around play that Topeka High wanted to run on first down on that possession that ended in a botched snap and a loss of 13 that killed the drive. They eventually are able to run it, and Williams is able to gain just a few yards out of the play. That's well, victory formation now for Dodge City. And they brought the starting quarterback back out, Alden Nedler, who had an efficient day distributing the ball to his playmakers, including Chance Kerr, who is the deep man in this victory formation. Nedler takes a long snap and kneels down. And now the... Game clock goes under 35 seconds. The play clock was a little slow to start, which means with the game clock ahead of the play clock, this ball game can come to an end with no more snaps in this one. A phenomenal effort by the Dodge City Red Demons. They make a long trip, just about five hours north and east, to the capital city tonight, and they take it to the Topeka High Trojans. And as the final 10 seconds tick off the clock here at Hummer Sports Park, Dodge City will advance to the second round in a meeting with the Lawrence Lions with a 39-0 win over the Topeka High Trojans. 
on the first night of playoff football action in the state of Kansas. Dodge City for all on the season with a playoff victory, advancing to the second round for the second year in a row. Topeka 